Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, pastors defend their silence on critical issues. More views on the results of the referendum. Quite a busy night for police and what's out there for the thousands of new high school graduates. Welcome to our news. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, pastors who launched a widespread campaign against Bill 4 in the gender equality referendum are defending themselves against claims they have been silent on a number of pertinent issues. Pastor of Grace Community Church, Lyle Bethel, says those criticisms are ignorant. That's a very easy, easy question to answer. You see, we find the people that say those kinds of comments are absolutely ignorant to what the church does. I, and I couldn't use a better word. Bethel insists that while they may not be outspoken on every issue, he says churches across the country have helped address a number of social issues. They have no idea the, the, the marriages we're saving, the amount of uh, youth that we're interac interacting with in the school systems, the amount of uh, children we're feeding, the amount of families we're, we're looking after, the amount of uh, our, our our members sit on crime panels and... Bethel and other pastors have launched vote no campaigns in the last two referendums. Some have been critical of the religious leaders, insisting there are many other issues that need just as much attention, including a high murder and unemployment rate. Bethel says while there are many complaints about the church, he believes that if the church stopped its work, the Bahamas would be submerged in chaos. If you remove the influence of the church from this nation, you would see pandemonium you would see absolute societal discord, chaos. It, it'll just be overwhelming. And so when I hear people saying the church only steps up to the plate with these big, big issues, they fail to understand something. We are dealing with the issues all the time, everywhere, in every place, constantly. Well, Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis is calling for international observers to chaperone the 2017 general election. Dr. Minnis highlighted a number of irregularities that he alleges took place during Tuesday's gender equality referendum. We wish to put the government on notice that these irregularities must be fixed. In light of this, the Free National Movement will demand that international organizations be invited to observe the Bahamas' general elections in 2017. Minutes claimed there were flaws which he said resulted in many persons being denied their fundamental right to cast their ballot and could possibly cast a long dark shadow on our country's ability to hold free and fair elections. These irregularities are of great concern to us, especially in light of the upcoming general elections. The four bills which aimed to bring gender equality to the country's constitution were overwhelmingly rejected by voters at the polls on Tuesday. The full results were not released until Thursday. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis also weighing in on the time it took for the referendum results to come in. He said he understands the frustration some feel about the delay, but he's sure there is a proper explanation as to why it took so long. I know there's some anxiety to have all the final numbers, but I think there, there, there has to be some proper uh, reasons for why they're not out. I would have hoped that they would have been as more more efficient or expeditious. Davis said once it is determined why it took as long as it did for the results to be released, he'll be willing to comment on that. He speculated it may have to do with the country's geography. You must remember that we are an archipelago. Um, communications, yes, we do have internet, but again, as an archipelago, information is slower to get to the center for disse dissemination. And we don't know what happened in that process so before unless i know exactly why it has not been made public sooner than you would have expected i would not be able to say much about that process well human rights activist erin green says it's easy to determine why the referendum turned out with such an overwhelming no vote she said those leading the vote no campaign just had a stronger voice in the community i think the no vote campaign has done a good job of uh, mobilizing the members of their community, of their constituency, if you call it that, and their churches. And uh, why I think that's a positive thing is because I think it's more effective to have people uh, direct their violence through political mechanisms than through personal engagement with people they're afraid of or concerned with. Green says she thinks she doesn't think the Vote Yes campaign was fully prepared for Bahamian voters to ask questions 
and to be as involved as they were. I don't think the Yes Vote campaign was prepared for Bahamians to uh, thoroughly investigate or interrogate the issues at hand. I don't think that they were prepared for what is becoming a more savvy Bahamian voter. Right? They are no longer going to allow religious, social, and political leaders to speak down to them, to tell them what the script is. They require a different type of discourse. Green says if the question is put to the public again, she has these recommendations for those in charge of the campaigns. They could also do more work with reaching out to people who are undecided and unsure. Um, and I think that would be helpful for all of us because the fuller the discussion, the more issues that we get to talk about and flesh out, the smarter, the wiser, and the more legally literate Bahamians will be.